Tonight's next guest was going to be a very, very good footballer for the Melbourne Football Club. He was anyway before knees cutting down. He went on to be a very fine coach for the Fremantle Dockers. Please make him welcome, Mr Chris Connolly, everybody. Mate, thanks for coming on the show. Lovely to see you. Thanks for the invite. No, no, it's good to have you. You you were a very fine, but super junior, one of the most talented juniors in the country. Then you get to Melbourne. Knees get you later in your career. Before that... Uh, as we're going to roll the highlights and people can judge for themselves what a player you were, you were one of the finest small men in the competition. How would you have described yourself? A uh, player who's got better with time. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back on the show in 10 years' time. Uh, so, look, I was a, a, a competitor and um, there's a lot of good players around at that time and it was great to be a part of it, part of the whole AFL industry. Long, right. long sleeve man. Uh, at times, got a bit cold in the Golden Valley when I played for <laughs> Sheppey United, so got used to the long sleeves and... Look, we used to train on the MCG, coached by Ron Barassi in my first year, Calvin Templeton and yeah. Peter Moore had come over in 83. Um, and it was a great time footy. Robbie Flower, one of the greatest players you'll ever see, a great leader at our club. And we used to have fun back in those days, Andy. We weren't as professional. There was a lot of social activity. Yes. We trained hard. <laughs> yes. We played hard on and off the field. It was great fun. Chris, did you ever kick on your right foot? We searched for... It's a silky left foot. You, you right. never, we couldn't find one right foot kick from you. Well, I, I, I did. I think I could yep. kick with my right foot. Yep. So, yep. you know, that was... I wasn't quick, Andy, so I had to kind of be skillful, yep. if you yep. like, and yep. try and get an advantage in that way. Which you were. You were Which dropped you were. in at the deep end. Uh, you played in your very first game. You oh, played yes. with Crackers Keenan, Mark Jackson and Tiger Croswell. There's some big names. That... Well, they are, and they, um, <laughs> oh, they're oh. huge names. And our team meetings on a Thursday night were very much like this show, <laughs> if you like. <laughs> and they were characters, <laughs> make no names about it. And I always say with Tiger Croswell, he's one of the greatest players ever. I don't think he knew my name. I'd come through the under-19s, played in the seniors. Tiger used to call everyone Tiger. Here, Tiger. Tiger, give it here, Tiger. Come over here, Tiger. That's why his nickname was Tiger. He didn't even know my name. But he did handball the ball to me to kick my first goal in AFL. Forever right? grateful. The only time he spoke to the young players, he got us all. He said, Tiger, 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 come over here. He said, I'm retiring at the end of the year. He said, all your contracts will go up by five grand. <laughs> Conversation Tiger Croswell had. And I've got to say, I love Mark Jackson. I love can I, can Mark I Jackson. Can I ask you, I want to specifically talk about the big characters of the game, but Mark Jackson, what was it like running around next to the biggest nutbag to ever take a field? I mean that in a nice... Look at that! What are you thinking? What are you doing? Misunderstood, that... Mick. Misunderstood. He had a great record for He, he was goals. a good footballer. He trained hard. Now, this is my take on Mark Jackson. He thought everyone was against him. That's what motivated him. Yeah. And he'd come to training early, do all his practice. But when we trained as a team, he felt that the team training didn't help the way he played. So he would hide behind the goalpost and not join in training, <laughs> or he'd run around trying and belt guys. Now, in the end, that made him go through four different clubs. Yeah, that's not going to happen. That's right. <laughs> but that was how he... Now, I've got to say this, Andy. All the great coaches were in the 1980s, and when Mark Jackson said he wasn't coached to play his specific role, he's right. We did nothing to help full forwards. It was all circle work. Uh, you know, mix it up, go back the other way, run and hard kick. to help the full forward when he's hiding behind the goal. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, man, just that is not much true. you can do. Chris, that we're just true. getting a message from the control booth. If you could lift the energy a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, with some magnificent names, and you mentioned Barassi oh, before. Oh, what ma- Ron Barassi, your first coach, what made him so great? Ron Barassi was a cross between Don Bradman, Elvis Presley and Michael Jordan. Jeez. All wrapped up in one. Right. <laughs> there's, no, there's never going to be another Ron Barassi. Yeah. No, You've got to I win six premierships for a start. Yep. You've got to coach a club to their first one and another one and then you know, transfer to a great club like Carlton to win two. Life member at four AFL clubs. Um, a mag- Look, he's hard. I remember training one day and we had a, four of us were sprinting and I went, ran this, I won the race, but I slowed down at the end. He said, come here, Chris. He said, what would it be, how would it be if you cost Australia a gold medal slowing down like that? He said, run 20 laps. <laughs> I did 20 laps of the MCG. But he was always trying to lift the bar. He was always trying to get you thinking. He was always challenging you and pushing you. But what you knew about Ron Brassi is off the field, he really loved you and wanted you to become the best person and player you could be. Yeah. Everyone loves Ron Brassi, who played under him. Well, he sounds like, you know, we only know from, from hearing the stories about what a wonderful motivator he was. But he was also a bit of a fashion plate too, oh, Chris. Yes. And you would have uh, seen that sort of stuff. Imagine, ever get a spray from Ron while he was wearing his bow tie? <laughs> <laughs> when, when he got really animated, it started spinning. <laughs> Look, What's he, going on there? <laughs> 
He was innovative on all fronts. Yeah. And look, we'd have a bit of a crack, but never in front of him, Mick. We're not no. actually... <laughs> well, but, uh, yeah, he used to test the boundaries on a lot of fronts. He's very innovative, Coach. Absolutely. That's what made him great as much as anything. Well, imagine getting a spray... With bow ties being up, and imagine getting a spray from Ron when he was wearing this number. <laughs> Here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> look at that. He looks like Freddie Mercury's older brother. <laughs> You were, now, look at you. That's you on the left, Chris. That's, you were there for that. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember what were you thinking when you saw Ron wearing that? You look good. <laughs> <laughs> you look good. We all start trying to wear white gear around. <laughs> Tom Landry. You know the, the, the blokes he brought the up? Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, that's right. Everyone yeah, wanted to meet Ron Brassie when they came to town, right. Andy, and they all came down to Melbourne. And, and look, Ron gave as much as he could to everyone in the community. He did as much as he could. You talk about... In, being innovative, after your second game, oh. he made you play a, a game during the week, didn't he? Look, it is true. It's unbelievable when you think about it. That my second game against Footscray, and, and look, Ron was trying to help everyone. He was trying to help the prison system. I mean, you're not going to believe this, right? And we, we were playing on the Sunday morning after my second game, we're going to play the Pentridge Prisoners. So we're at the front of Pentridge. It's unbelievable. It's so we get I, I, kind of. No sling that. tackles that. <laughs> <laughs> so we go in. Jika Jika has just been built on the oval, on this old oval, under a tree. There's a guy like Angry Anderson, the coach, going, they've got plenty of skill, but they've got no guts. <laughs> so right then I thought, I'm going nowhere near the ball in this game. Now, the other thing, Ron played in the game. Ron played? Ron got a free kick. Dale Dixon led. Dale Dixon played for Melbourne. Yeah. Brisbane was the CEO of the Surface Paradise Council for years. And his lolly popped it up. His lolly popped it up with prisoners who think we've got no gun. <laughs> and he's the coach, Andy. You've got to sit under that ball. Dale Dixon got knocked out and carried off on a stretcher at Pentridge in a game. I was fine, Andy. I went nowhere near the ball. I was talking to this guy I'm on in the full pocket about Durangol because I come from Shepparton. He said, yeah, I used to go there. He said, uh, I said, well, how come he's still not there? You know? He said, I tried to escape. He's, I said, how come? He said, well, when you're as in for as long as me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> The next ball is definitely yours. Is it true? Is it, what, Ro Ro Robbie Flower would have got a pretty tough time. Robbie didn't play. Terry Neely didn't. Anyone who was any good didn't play. And, and they nearly knocked us off, Mick, but there was a few players. Des Odawo, who became a great South Australian player for Melbourne, he wanted to break into the team. He dominated the game. We won by about a point. We yeah. played in Pentridge against mass murderers. Now, I don't know whether they were or not, but we've seen the movies here. You might as well. It's frightful. Here's what I heard. The full forward for Pentridge led out to the flank. He kept leading. He kept leading. <laughs> he ran out the door and down the street and never came back. True or false? All right. Uh, it's, a, it's incredible. Have you got a, is there, just a quick one on that Mel, the brassy yeah. Melbourne era. Have you got a theory as to why it, never, why it didn't fly? It did. Huh. Because John Northey came and was, is a great coach, John Northey. Yep. And he took a group up to be very competitive for a long time. But all those players came through the Ron Brassie and Ray Jordan era. Of course they So are. they had to build the, rebuild the list from scratch. Yep. And then it took off. And Melbourne were consistent. Final, didn't win a premiership. But were in the finals for quite a while under John Norton. What have you brought in? You brought something in for us. What have you, what have you well, got? Well, we were talking about this. It's got a fair run on this show. This is a hit album, Mick. <laughs> this is Come On Demons. It's Come On Demons. This Pete Sullivan wrote the music. I wrote the words. You, Jimmy Stein pulled this together. You wrote the words, and I think you're starting to understand why you're truly on this show. <laughs> right? <laughs> because uh, apart from being a giant of the game, which you are, we, we had so much fun watching this clip. And it, they might do another one, I think. If you win the flag this year, mm. they should update it. This is uh, from the brain of Chris Connolly. It is uh, Come On Demons. Come on, Demons. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Demons. We've got the team, yeah. Football machine to take us to the top. We go to the top. We've got the fire with the desire.
There's a, there's a little bit to unpack there. Firstly, let's have a look at your cameo. There's a couple of great moments. Here you are with the spinning ZZ top style. That's Greg Healy, Graham Yates and Peter Rowe. Here you are leaving a... A limo. A well, limo. Jimmy Steins was like Steven Spielberg. He pulled the video together and we had to get people to sponsor... Because it was expensive back in yeah, those days to do these things. It doesn't look it. The it limo... Doesn't... <laughs> But we got there. Chris, can I ask you this? The, like Mick said, you penned the lyrics to that song. What's yeah. your, what, the musical background that would think that you could do it? I'm in a group, the Shepherd and Red Roosters are all muso. <laughs> <laughs> so we've all grown up singing and carrying on. There's a lot of fun back in those days, Sam. Yeah. You know? And we see Richmond tried to bring it back into the game a bit. And we did a lot of um, you know, performances for our supporters to raise money for footy trips. And it kind yeah. of extended from that. I was injured during that year. Wendy Stapleton, remember Wendy and the Rockets? Bob oh, Valentine, I do two remember. of the greatest singers well, all right, in the all history right, of the world. I'm agreeing with you. Can, can I just say this? And I'm asking you about your writing process. When you get a bit of... Uh, when you get as writer's block, do you just chuck in the word, come on? <laughs> Is that, is that your, okay, I've got another question about the clip. Let's just have a quick look. Yep. Uh, who's that, Andy? Uh, Sean, Sean, White. Sean White. Sean White. Why, why is there an Irishman playing the bagpipes? <laughs> Jimmy Steins was like Steven Spielberg thinking outside the square, Mick. I've got to tell you, he pulled this whole thing together. It was a lot of fun. Uh, it was, it was a lot an of enormous fun. contribution well to football. Done. And well done. And the Melbourne Football Club's better for that effort that you, that you put together. So well done. Stick yeah. around. There's plenty more we want to talk to you about. On the other side of the break, one of the most controversial moments in the 2000s. Yes. You were in the middle of this down in Tasmania. Siren Gate it became known as. We're going to talk to Chris Connolly about that after this. With eight or nine Carlton players all around him on the mark. They're doing a war dance. This is crazy, he says. He shoots for goal. He kicks the goal, and Hawthorne wins the game. Ben Nixon is the hero. Oh, and Chris Connolly, welcome to the Panthers. Chris, an amazing day, 2001. Peter Schwab can't coach the team. You take over. You, I think you were a reserves coach at Hawthorne at the time. You take out one game, one win. What are your memories Went of that? after the siren, yeah, if you yeah, don't yeah. mind. No, it was a big game. We were fighting for top four position against Carlton and Peter rang up on the Sunday morning. It was a Sunday game at 10 o'clock and said, we've got one out. Yep. And I said, who's that? And he said, me. Yep. <laughs> he said, but we want you to coach the team. Now, it was a big, it was a big deal. Massive. Because in the coaches' box, we had Calvin Moore, Gary Buckenara, Donald McDonald, Paul Semin was the ruck coach, came up to fill my role. I moved into the... A senior role, David Parkin was the footy manager, one of the greatest people in the history of footy. And they backed us in, and, and at the end of the day, statistically, I'm the most successful coach in Hawthorne. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't overly convincing, and he was behind all day. Yeah, so. no, you got and the and job look, done. Ben was fantastic, and D Daniel Chick got the ball to Ben, and a lot of pressure on a young player there, but you know, Ben showed what he was made of and went on and had a sensational career. The interim did. coach record, like you said, one, one for one. Were you, were you ever a chance of getting the, the senior? A permanent job. I was interviewed for it, but um, I, don't, I, I think there was a few people ahead of me. Well, you went on to coach Fremantle, um, uh, one of two sides that play in the a derby every year, which is one of the great games mm, of the football calendar. And you had front row seats uh, for life. We're going to get to that a little later and talk to you about how important that is. But talk us through what it was like moving to that town and becoming coach in a two-team town. Well, we're $8 million in debt and wooden spooners at the time, <laughs> so we're really beefing up and doing a lot of publicity around our game. So it was a sellout against Collingwood. Nettie Maguire and Kevin Cheedy couldn't do enough for the Fremantle Football Club to help us build crowds like that when we're a bottom team. Mm. And, um, and they were fantastic. And we really had to... Ricard was the president, Cameron Swab was the CEO, and we had to start from scratch. We had a bad relationship with the AFL for different reasons. The people before it for our, held the place together. Yep. And, you know, we really got going. The players were sensational. We did a lot of publicity. We stepped outside the square doing a lot of things around town. And uh, the guys played hard and the, the membership went through the roof. Two years in. Very... Two years in. So you wooden spooners when you come in. Yeah. Two years in, you're into the finals. Yeah. A couple of years later, you get him into a prelim. What's it like coming into a, into a club? We know what it's like for, for non-people from that town that... Was there a sense that you were always a bit of an outsider over there? Imagine if there were, Well, I was born in New South Wales, so I told them that right yeah, from right. the get-go. Because <laughs> they do hate Victorians. <laughs> I'm not yeah, Victorian. I'm not Victorian. Yeah. But imagine if there was just Essendon and Collingwood here in Melbourne. 
Yeah. It just splits the whole place, and that's what it does. Yeah. And that's why Perth and Western Australia is such a footy state, because all the Fremantle supporters watch the Frio team, their team, yeah. and then they all watch the West Coast game to hoping they lose. <laughs> they hate each other, Andy, and yeah. from a playing point of view, you've really got to hold the players back. So there's no... You've got to pull them back rather than try and motivate them to play to the best of their ability on that. And they're great clashes. And Western Australia is a very proud football state in terms of football, the waffle, some of the greatest players ever. And now Fremantle and West Coast are two of the great clubs in the competition. And uh, it's great for the state. It's a wonderful football state. It it is indeed a great football state. And these are some of the most fiery encounters I've I've ever seen. This and the showdown, they're both the same. It seems to be state pride on the line. Yeah, look, there's a, there is a lot of respect, but it's a win at all costs. See those colours on those jumpers? Mick, people used to write in and said, Freo can't win because of the colours of the jumper or because of the song or whatever the case may be. I agree with the song. <laughs> I agree with the song. <laughs> but, um, I, I'm OK to never hear that again, by look, the way. Th- this brings out the very best in every single player on the field. So if you want to watch a game apart from your team this weekend, Correct. watch the derby. It doesn't exactly matter where right. they are. On the ladder, you know the builder. I used to get in. I, got, I used to get interviewed two weeks out. They'd say, "How's so and so going to be up for the derby?" I'm saying, "Well, we're playing Collingwood this week. I think we'll jump that hurdle." I, when I first got the job, people had come up and they'd say, "Chris, win two games, forget the rest." Yep, <laughs> that's what it was like. Yep, yep. Uh, there's a great hatred, but it's done in a. A positive way, let's say. Never let me down. Never let me down. That's a great way. This is it's wonderful to have you on our show. Thanks so much for coming on. No, I'm not wrapping it up. I'm just saying, I'm just acknowledging what I'm sure everyone's watching. It's just thinking, it just, it's wonderful to hear you and um, having a chat, answer our questions, especially with uh, considering Andy's here. Because back in 2005, down at Geelong, you weren't as keen to talk to Murray. Oh. Mate, to come back from an embarrassing effort like they did last week, that speaks volumes of these blokes in this group. Yeah, it is. And here's one. Interview the player. I will. Just, 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 one, just one quick one. Why were you over here? Was it the sun? What was the reason you were in the, on the bench? Just a bit bad at the, in the last quarter, but it'll fix up. It's a great uh, stadium. Go grab a player, mate. They'll good on you, Chris. <laughs> me off guard, Andy. Oh. You call me, usually senior coaches get tied to a post and have tomatoes thrown at them <laughs> at the press conference by all of the media, but you were trying to get a few in early in the piece. Uh, you, were, you, were very, you were always very generous with your time uh, with, the, with your, the mob on the other side of the microphone. Did that uh, take you back to your nightclub days, did it? <laughs> <laughs> The, um, what was the scarf for? Yeah, I was very cold. Was no, it was cold that day. We it's cold. It's it freezing. It was really cold. It was a hey, bizarre while you, look. You, you, you love your footy. We know that. We talked about the fact that you were coaching Fremantle. Um, while you were coaching Fremantle, I want to talk to you about something. You're still doing this. It's a Wednesday night, and just like thousands of other WA young footballers, the Adidas 16s are going through their paces at their weekly training session. From a distance, there's nothing unusual about that until you take a closer look at the coach. None other than Freo's own Chris Connolly. That's great, isn't it? The Adderdale under-16s. Why were you doing that while you are coaching Freo now? Well, I'd miss the games because we're away every second weekend or we're usually played on a Sunday and the under-16s played on a Sunday. Mitch Marsh and Brad Shepard played in that team. My son Michael was coach. My wife Penny was the team manager. That's great. It was all in. We got up for the uh, premiership, so I did get some silverware in. Oh, well done. You don't understand that, but... That's great. But Keith Shepherd was the coach, did a great job, and you can't beat community sport, Andy. No, it's great. You can't. You cannot. And uh, by the way, it would have been a big thrill for the youngsters. Oh, no they have an doubt. AFL senior coach oh, yeah. taking Been training. Beside themselves. And uh, some of them couldn't hide their feelings. It's pretty special. There's not many other people, not many other clubs have an AFL coach coaching us here. It's good. Do you realise how special it is that to have a, to have someone like Chris down as your coach? Uh, preferably I prefer Wusha, but you know. How... <laughs> There's no love lost. Andy, can I say that was Chris Mainwaring? One of the interviewing. interviewing oh, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the greatest Western Australians ever. Yeah, mega. Never yes. be forgotten. No, never Absolutely. Never you mentioned be. earlier that uh, promoting in a two horse town, you, you sometimes think outside the square, go above and beyond. I think this is one of those occasions when you turned up at the Kiss concert oh, yeah. in Perth on stage uh, to present them with, with a Freo jumper. Yeah, look, it was crazy. We were playing at Subiaco against St Kilda. Kiss were at the Wacker. We did a deal with the members and the audience. 
to get in and, at the right price. Yeah. And we'd lost, so I'm filthy. So they said, look, you've still got to go and give that uh, jumper to the, the Kiss guys. So we get to the whacker. The manager comes up. He said, Chris, between the fourth and fifth song, you'll be getting up on stage and giving the jumper to Paul Stanley. I said, you're kidding, aren't you? He said, they're professionals, Chris. Da, da, da. So anyway, I get up between the two songs. I've got the West Coast Eagles people booing me. I've got the Fremantle people booing me because we lost that day. The Kiss fans, I've just wrecked their concert. <laughs> At any stage, Christy, uh, did, 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 did you think of just going up to Paul Stanley and going, do you know Come On Demon? Could <laughs> <laughs> you do it? We missed that opportunity. Oh, we have not, that's good who, thinking. Who would, have, who would have thought that, that, a, that a topless man wearing makeup wouldn't have been the saddest person on stage? <laughs> We got a segment on this show we love thanks to Carbon Zero. It's called Rewrite the Rules. And we've got a humdinger oh, today, have we? We're not? going to pick up this game. You're going to talk us through it yeah. when we get there. But let's pick this particular game up down in Tasmania with eight minutes, eight, eight seconds left on the clock. So about 40 metres out, they've got to win clear well, possession of the other side. So they need to go. block them in the space. Opportunity for Frio, they left it behind. That was Headland, and the ball is locked in again. And I think the clock will stop again. Saints wanting a free kick. Just about all that can happen now is a free kick okay, out of this. So there it is. You that think that game over. over. over Mick. You're Siren's leaving. gone. You're Siren's le- gone. We've you're got a clock in the box. Okay, so you're leaving the ground. And then you, when do you notice this is still happening? Well, as soon as I turned back around, so I thought, the only way you get the AFL's attention is to get on the front page of the paper. So we stormed down onto the field. <laughs> and and you know, make first. a big deal. And the players knew it heard the siren because we have a two-minute thing we practice and they yeah. were expecting it. And we've made our way out onto the field. Okay, so as you make your way out onto the field, what are you thinking? What's what's your plan of attack here? Cause as much trouble as I can. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, right here, the, the super competitive Lenny Hay sees me. He thinks again. He turns into the Exorcist very smartly, Lenny. And it was just crazy. You heard the siren. There's a lot you, the game you, you heard the you? siren in the booth, didn't you? I got a clock. No, but did clock. you hear the siren? I, I don't need to hear the oh. siren. <laughs> Do you want me to answer that? Yes, I do. Oh, of course I heard <laughs> <it. laughs> Of course you did. What, do you remember what Len, Lenny's the nicest bloke in football? He like he's, he's, filthy. Crap, he's, he's telling me to get off the ground, but in between every word there's a swear yeah, right, word. Okay, yeah, he was yeah. threatening. It was bullying, Andy. So, so, what, so do you know what happens? At what point did you know there was a resolution? Well, there's no resolution. Right. So okay. we just had to... Uh, because it was a draw, because Steve Baker kicked the point. Yeah, so the kicked, game's a draw. The game's a draw. And, and we're not happy. Yep. But it was Ben Tarbox, our fitness guy. He got all the players together. We started preparing for next week, as you do. Rick Hart and Cameron Swab took over and started working with the AFL. Adrian Anderson rang up Cameron Swab straight after the game and said, you're a bit stiff there. <laughs> bit stiff! <laughs> <laughs> we won the game, Andy! Thanks, you did win the game. can you be? Yeah, very, very. <laughs> if, you weren't ha- if you weren't happy then, how happy were you when you learnt that Stephen Baker had actually been paid a free kick for a push in the back shot. and had a kick after the siren? Like, it was oh, yeah, crazy. They gave, did you, they did gave you him the kick again. Did you consider standing on the mark? <laughs> I'll tell you what, if I got out there, I'm making my way from the boundary here, but... Did you write Well, you can they... see all the staff on the ground there, Sam. Like, it's mayhem. It's not on. No, it's crazy. Right Steve. now, you must be thinking, we're going to lose this game if he kicks this goal. But exactly. But obviously, exactly. he... he, he um, He's so, lived, he lives every kid's let me, dream, let me, uh, Stephen Baker, and he kicks a point. But there you go. He draws the game again. Yeah. So, like, Andy, Andy, that four points, St Kilda end up just outside the top four mm. at the end of the season. Yeah, yeah. Melbourne knocks them off. Grant Thomas gets sacked that night. Yeah, it's good to see you There's a lot go. riding on the <laughs> It's really good but to you see got you got, him, you got <laughs> the four point. You got the four point. You said yeah, that your, your boss and the CEO went to work and, and you got... Um, <laughs> is it fair to you? Um, did you feel like there was a bit of a vendetta against you bike stand in Tasmania? Because a month earlier, uh, wasn't there an issue down in Tassie with yeah. Fremantle and... Look, I was big on promoting the club, and I didn't like the club being disrespected. Yep. So I'd always count how many clips we have at functions and all that and be chasing <laughs> up the AFL guys. <laughs> We've ran out of Tasmania, and the song didn't get played. Oh. So a little kind of muscly Greek guy, Noda, he was running the show. I ran into I said, Noda, I said, you didn't play our song. He said, it's a shit song. <laughs> <laughs> Noda, and you're watching, Noda. I know you are. They're all 
shit, Andy. <laughs> Don't start, bro. Now, let me say this, right? Richmond, I work from Tigerland. Oh, you're from India. Hollywood, Hollywood have got the premierships of Cakewalk. They've lost 29 grand finals. <laughs> Andy, you tell me who's got a shit song and who hasn't. Carlton's got a great song, Chris. The Carlton song's a great song. No doubt, uh, no doubt. Well done, mate. <laughs> hey, it's been magnificent to have you on the show. It really <laughs> has. <laughs> what, what are you doing these days? You, surely you're doing something in footy. Look, place. mate of mine, Terry Dillon from AFL, we've got a company, Club Map. We help community clubs get uh, the strategic plan right, operations, raise new revenue, uh, really help give them some energy, get them on the right. There's a modern way to run a community club. Uh, get in contact with us and we'll show you how to go about it. We do clubs all over the country in all different sports. There's our uh, website. We'd love to try and help you. Community clubs are the heart and soul <laughs> of gotcha. sport in Australia. No doubt about that. And they can, all, they can all do with a hand at the moment. So clubmap.com.au if you're a club that needs a hand. Uh, the energy speaks for itself. What a joy it's been to have him on the show. Thanks for coming on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Chris Connolly joining us on the show. Uh, what an absolute pleasure to have you with us, mate. Don't go anywhere.